Hello, my name is Melinda Gooden and I'm the leader of the EndNote team at the Swinburne University of Technology Library. Today I'm going to show you how to do syncing using EndNote 20. Syncing is the inbuilt backup system that works with EndNote and EndNote Online in order to make sure that you have a safe and steady and regular backup of your research. The library that I'm looking at here is only a small library. It has a few attachments. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you the process of connecting it through to our EndNote Online account. So what I need to do is click on the sync status. And if I do so, you'll see that it'll report that it has not been synchronized with an account. If I say sync now, it asks me to either sign up for a new account or put in my EndNote account credentials. Let's assume I don't have an EndNote account. So this is how we set up our syncing. So sign up. Put your email address in twice. It does not have to be your Swinburne email address. Once you've put your email address in twice, you need to fill in the fields that have a red asterisk. The password requirements are very specific. You must have at least eight characters. You need to have letters, numbers and special symbols. And as you start to type, it'll tell you if your password is matching up to its requirements. So please note down your password. The most common request we have is how to reset or reclaim passwords. Scroll down to the bottom. Please read the end user license agreement. And when you've done so, click I agree. So your email account registration is now complete. The first time that you go to sync to your new EndNote Online account, you will get this warning to create a compressed library backup. We do recommend this just in case there's some issue uh, with the syncing process. The backup library will basically be the two components of your EndNote library, the .enl and the .data folder that together make an EndNote library work. So I will create a backup and I'm going to save it to uh, my EndNote folder that I created here. And if you like, you can always put in the date to help keep track of uh, the currency of your libraries. So I'm doing it in year, 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 month, month, day, day, order. Save. Once the backup's been created, EndNote 20 will send updates to the new EndNote Online account. It can take a little while if you have full text attachments. Uh, so just be patient the first time you're syncing. So once you've done that first transfer of data, you'll be given a report to indicate that all the changes have been sent and so forth. So you do have a limit of 1 million records. You also have a limit of 5,000 groups and 5,000 group sets. There is unlimited attachment storage, but we do note that it will take you a long time to back up if you have a substantial library. Also, please note that there's a full gigabyte limit to making the um, the condensed library backups, which are available from our file menu under compressed library. The next thing that we need to do is go to our edit menu and preferences and look at the syncing section to make sure that everything is okay. So there's the email address, there's the hidden password, there's the location of the library. So this library, even though it's not on my C drive, it is on a permanent backup drive. It's not on Dropbox or OneDrive or anything like that. And if I now say sync automatically, what will happen is that every 15 minutes, whenever I open EndNote and whenever I close EndNote, my library will automatically be backed up. Thank you.